Who is the most underrated player on every NFL team? In this video, I highlight the underappreciated players within their own franchise. And trust me, there is a difference between being underrated league-wide and underrated on your own roster. These are the players that I think are awesome and deserve a lot more respect from NFL fans. Before I give you the most underrated player on every NFL team, Gronk spike the like button, subscribe to the bottom line view for more NFL vids just like this, and comment your opinion on who is the most underrated player on your favorite team. Kicking it off with the Arizona Cardinals, best player on their offensive line, and that is Justin Pugh. Pugh ranked as the eighth best pass blocker at the guard position in 2019 and 24th overall. He did miss some action in 2017 and in 2018, 17 games in the last two years, but he had a huge bounce back season in 2019 with his third top 25 season of his career. Pew is back. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals offense is better because of it. The line wasn't really great last year for Atlanta, but there is one player that's pretty awesome, and that is Jake Matthews. Just because four other players are not very good, you shouldn't take anything away from Matthews, as he was ranked 13th at the tackle position in 2019, the fifth best pass blocker at the tackle position, and he's ranked in the top 13 at the position four times in his career. Sometimes consistency becomes boring in the NFL, which leads to becoming underrated. For the Ravens, Nick Boyle is their most underrated player. Boyle was the fourth best run blocking tight end in the NFL in 2019 and the 12th best overall. He's very deceptive in the receiving game. Without his well-rounded skill set, the Ravens just aren't the same offense. They aren't as dynamic. They aren't as multiple offensively. He kind of allows them to run out of pass sets and pass out of run sets. There is a reason they felt confident in trading Hayden Hurst, and that reason was Nick Boyle. For the Buffalo Bills, their most underrated player is Matt Milano. Everybody talks about Tremaine Edmonds because he's the first rounder. He's the young stud at linebacker. He gathers all the headlines, but honestly, the best linebacker on the Bills is Matt Milano. And Matt Milano is one of the best cover linebackers in the NFL, whether that be in man-to-man -man coverage or in zone coverage. He's athletic enough to take on backs like James White in space and pretty much blanket them and take them out of the game. He ranked 29th overall in 2019 with the seventh best coverage grade. He's a huge component of McDermott's defense, linebackers that are rangy and athletic, and that is Matt Milano. For the Carolina Panthers, Trey Boston is their most underrated player, and I would argue that the Panthers even underrated Trey Boston because he left their system after playing pretty well and went on to play for multiple teams, multiple franchises, was extremely underrated in his production, comes back, and is their best player in their secondary. He ranked 14th in 2019 among all safeties. He's had three top 24 seasons in a row, the fourth best coverage grade in the NFL. He can play man, he can play in the box, come up and run support. He can play zone deep as a free safety. Boston can do it all. For the Chicago Bears, Roy Robertson Harris is their most underrated player. Robertson Harris doesn't really get a lot of respect because everybody knows Eddie Goldman, everybody knows Akeem Hicks, and everybody knows Khalil Mack. But nobody talks about Robertson Harris, who is one of the best interior role players in the entire sport. With 10 pressures and two and a half sacks last season, he is a great run stuffer and a huge man at six foot seven. The Bengals had an awesome offseason, and I think the one move that went overlooked was signing the number six linebacker last season, number seven in run defense, and number 11 in coverage, that is Josh Bynes. He ranked 14th in 2018, and it's really time for him being a backup for multiple seasons now to get his shine as a full-time starter. 
For the Cleveland Browns, Sheldrick Redwine is their most underrated player. Now, he's very young, but this season, he's going to be able to show off his skill set as likely one of the starters for the Cleveland Browns. They completely revamped their safety group this offseason, but the one man that did remain was Redwine. He ranked 49th among all safeties in a pretty limited all-around role. He played 170 snaps at free safety, 130 in the box, and 43 in the slot. That showed off his versatility as a very young player, and you could see his role expand as a sophomore. The Dallas Cowboys have a lot of great offensive linemen, whether it's Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, or recently Travis Frederick, but nobody gives Lael Collins the love that he deserves. Lael Collins is the Cowboys' most underrated player as the fifth best tackle in the NFL and the third best at run blocking, ranking seven spots higher than his teammate Tyron Smith, who gathers all the headlines. He's going on just 27 years old, which is pretty much the prime for a tackle, and he might be their best player on their offensive line going forward. Vic Fangio is no stranger to developing great linebackers, and I think perhaps the next great Fangio linebacker is Alexander Johnson. Johnson was one of the four best linebackers in 2019. And it was no fluke either because he played over 700 snaps. But this guy has gained virtually no recognition as the best run defender at the linebacker position last season. He ranked in the top 10 also in coverage and in pass rush. Alexander Johnson is a budding star at the linebacker position. When you run Matt Patricia's defense, you need to have a strong secondary. And the budding star that nobody is discussing in Detroit secondary is the young safety Tracy Walker. Walker was awesome as a rookie in 2018. He ranked 21st in 2019 among all safeties in football, raking in over 100 tackles on the season, and he only allowed 64% completion percentage in coverage last year. The Green Bay Packers have one of the best secondaries in football that nobody really talks about. And Channon Sullivan is that chess piece. He is the glue of this defense. He plays slot. He plays linebacker. He plays corner out wide. He plays free safety. He is the Swiss army knife of the Packers and Petten scheme. He's asked to do very uncomfortable things for a cornerback like play linebacker. And he's a big reason the Packers defense took big strides forward in 2019. An impressive player for such a young player ranking 19th in 2019 at the corner position. For the Texans, they have an absolutely dreadful, awful, terrible secondary, but there is one player that stands out amongst the rest, and that is Justin Reed. Justin Reed is one of the best safeties in football, ranking 11th in coverage in 2019. He allowed only a 62% completion percentage and 6.8 yards per target. He is just about the only good player in their back end in Houston. He's fast, he's rangy, he's a great athlete, and that makes him a great free safety. The Indianapolis Colts have done a phenomenal job drafting linebackers. And you can add another one to the list with Bobby Okarike, who is next in line to be one of the best rangy linebackers in the AFC South. He covers a ton of space. He reacts quickly. He tackles well. And that is exactly what they look for in Indianapolis. He had 65 tackles, but he only missed two tackles all year long. He ranked in the top 10 at the position in 2019 as a rookie and in the top 10 in coverage, which is extremely impressive, not only playing the linebacker spot, but also sometimes covering slot receivers, which gives you kind of an insight into how athletic this kid is. He will play a larger role going forward, and he played a huge role when Darius Leonard was not in the lineup. I mean, talk about underrated. A player who has been top five at his position 
for four straight seasons. That's Brandon Linder of the Jaguars. Linder is just a stud, and mostly he's underrated because he plays for Jacksonville, and their players just don't get enough credit. He's one of the best players at the center position in the league, extremely well-rounded, and deserves more respect. Offensive linemen are just underrated in general, and that includes the best offense in all of football. I'm talking about the Kansas City Chiefs. Arguably the best right tackle in the game plays for the Chiefs, but nobody talks about him because they talk about Mahomes. And then once they're done talking about and praising Mahomes, they move on to Kelsey. And then they talk about Tyree Kill. Mitchell Schwartz might be the best player at his position. He played the most snaps at the tackle position in 2019 in the entire league. It's time that this guy gets a little bit more recognition for protecting the best quarterback in the league. Whenever the Raiders lose a game, everybody immediately points to Derek Carr. Everybody, season after season, is just pointing their finger at Derek Carr, saying it's his fault, saying they're going to move on from him. We're just waiting. We're waiting for something to happen and for the Raiders and Gruden to move on from Derek Carr. And it's the classic Gruden quarterback syndrome. But he's not elite. But let's be honest, Derek Carr hasn't really had a chance to prove that he is elite because he doesn't have a great supporting cast, at least recently, around him. Derek Carr has a ton of talent. He has the arm angles. He has the accuracy. He has a pretty great arm. He's underrated in terms of his mobility. And he was 7-9 last year with a team that I wouldn't say is 7-9 worthy with 21 touchdowns and only 8 picks with a 100 passer rating. I'm excited to see Derek Carr going forward with a little bit more help around him. The Los Angeles Chargers have perhaps one of the most underrated, underappreciated, up-and-coming linebackers in the game. And the linebacker position in LA doesn't really get a lot of love due to how awesome their pass rushers are and how great their corners are. But Drew Tranquil is a huge sleeper at the position. He has speed, he has instincts, he's smart, and he's a missile when he sees the ball in the open field. I think this guy could be really special. The Los Angeles Rams have pretty much Travis Kelsey light. And I think he's starting to gain a little bit more steam amongst the fantasy community. But this guy needs more love amongst the entire NFL fandom. I'm talking about Tyler Higby, who caught 69 balls for 734 yards and three touchdowns with 396 of those yards coming after the catch. With Cooks gone, with Gurley gone, Higby could be in for a giant role in 2020. I know everybody thinks that Ryan Fitzpatrick is a joke, but come on, let's give Fitzmagic a little bit of credit. He was 5-8 and eight last year with a team that was expected to lose every game. Like, they were expected to win approximately zero games. Ryan Fitzpatrick won five. He threw for 3,500 yards, the second most of his career that he's ever thrown. He had three fourth quarter comebacks. He had four game winning drives. He beat New England in New England, which the Dolphins never do. And he was playing behind perhaps the worst offensive line in football. There's a big reason Miami was actually competitive last year. And that reason is Fitzmagic. Afedi Odenabo is the next player in the long line line of Minnesota defensive linemen who are going to be just standout pass rushers. 28th as an edge player in 2019, and I think this is why the Vikings are so confident if Everson Griffin leaves. They can just plug another beast in there and say, hey, last year you had seven sacks, 18 pressures, 13 quarterback hits, and seven tackles for loss, which was essentially your first season after playing one game in 2018 for Arizona. You come in there and dominate, and I think he's only going to get better in in 2020. For the New England Patriots, they took the league by storm defensively last year, scoring more points than any defense, allowing less points than any defense, and just 
straight up dominating in the passing game. And a big reason for that is the guy on the opposite side of Stefan Gilmore. Everybody talks about Gilmore, but there's more than Gilmore in this secondary. They call him just cover Jackson for a reason. I'm talking about JC Jackson, who had five interceptions, a 53 completion percentage, and get this, a 35 passer rating allowed, which was the lowest in the NFL. And oh yeah, as a rookie, undrafted by the way, he allowed a 48 completion percentage and a 45 passer rating in the season where the Patriots won the Super Bowl. Zero touchdowns allowed in his entire career. He is long, he is tall, he is physical, and he has phenomenal ball skills. The New Orleans Saints probably have one of the most underappreciated defensive lines in the entire NFL. Shy Tuttle is a name that you probably don't recognize, but he is one of those pieces in the interior, ranking 21st among all interior defensive linemen in 2019. He really has a knack for knocking the ball down and getting his hands on the football and making plays in the running game. Look out for Tuttle in 2020. The New York Giants also have themselves a great run stuffer, not Leonard Williams, but a man named Dalvin Tomlinson, who is probably the best player on that defensive line, even though Leonard Williams got the contract. He ranked 17th overall at the position last year, ninth in run defense with three and a half sacks, nine quarterback hits, seven tackles for loss, and 13 pressures on the QB. I get that Jamal Adams is awesome, but what about the other safety that plays for the Jets? Have you ever heard of him? Marcus May is not just underrated, but I think he's very, very good. And he partly helps Adams thrive by complementing him very well. They play completely different styles, and that's what makes their tandem so great. May ranked 17th at the safety spot in 2019 and has two top 20 years in a row, allowing just a 50% completion percentage. He's rangy, he's great as a roaming free safety, and like I said, is the perfect partner in crime for Jamal Adams. The Philadelphia Eagles, I know that they have Zach Ertz, but they don't just have one of the 10 best tight ends in the league. They perhaps have two of the 10 best tight ends in the league. I know it's crazy to say, but I think Goddard could actually be better soon, better than Zach Ertz. He has a well-rounded football game. He can block the second best run blocking grade in football. He took the ninth most snaps of any tight end, which speaks to his importance as a second tight end in this offense. He had 58 catches for 607 yards and five touchdowns, and he's only going on 25 years old. Steven Nelson is the best corner for my money on the Pittsburgh Steelers, ranking sixth in 2019. And I think everybody knows that the Steelers have a great defense, but they mostly give the credit to the guys up front, the big boys, and that's perfectly fine. But their cornerbacks deserve some love as well. Nelson was really great in his first season as a Steeler, allowing a 50% completion percentage and a 65.8 rating allow. Without an awesome free safety in the Seattle scheme defense, you do not have a great Seattle scheme defense. Jimmy Ward plays that role for the 49ers and is a huge reason that the 49ers defense dominated the 2019 season, allowing a 58% completion percentage in coverage. He flies around, he makes plays in every facet of the game, whether it's covering man-to-man -man on tight ends, whether it's covering slot receivers or making a play in the running game, his versatility is huge for this defense, ranking sixth overall at the safety spot, top 10 in coverage and top five in run defense. Jimmy Ward is great. Early last season, there was a new favorite target for Russell Wilson in Seattle, and it wasn't DK Metcalf initially, it was a young tight end. 
23 years old named Will Disley with 23 catches, 262 yards, and four touchdowns in six games as the starting tight end in Seattle. He was actually on pace for over 700 yards, over 60 catches, and 10 touchdowns. He's smart. He has strong hands. He has great chemistry for such a young player with Russell Wilson, and his potential is sky high. One thing I have noticed with the recent uprise in attention on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, now that they have Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski and the hype train in Tampa Bay, is the disrespect and just the lack of knowledge when it comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary. The Tampa Bay Bucks have one of the most underrated secondaries in all of football. I think a big reason is because nobody actually knows who these guys are. They're very underappreciated, very overlooked, and the underrated guy that stands out from the rest is Jamel Dean, who is a rookie in 2019, but ranked as a top 12 corner in all of football, allowing a 50% completion percentage, a 72 rating, and only 6.1 yards per target. Now imagine what he can do with the spotlight on him in Tampa Bay in year two. The Tennessee Titans had one of the most dangerous dominant run games in all of football down the stretch that I've seen in recent memory. And one guy who didn't get any credit, they credited Jack Conklin, who got paid in the offseason by the Cleveland Browns. They credited Lawan at the left tackle spot. But nobody talks about Ben Jones, who I would argue is their best lineman. He ranked as the third best pass blocking center in the league. From 2015 to 2018, he played 100% of the snaps for this Titans team. Next time you think about Derrick Henry, think of Ben Jones. A lot of people are starting to give a little bit of attention to the Washington Redskins defense, especially after drafting Chase Young. But Chase Young won't be successful if Matt Ioannidis doesn't continue to be one of the best one of the most overlooked and underrated interior pass rushers in the sport. 16 sacks in two seasons, 11 tackles for a loss, 16 quarterback hits, and 18 hurries. Matt Ioannidis is the best player on the Skins defense that nobody talks about. The most underrated player for every NFL team in the league today. If you enjoyed Gronk Spike, the like button, subscribe to the bottom line view for more NFL videos just like this, and comment below your opinion on who you believe your team's most underrated player is. It's Mitch. Peace.